Hi, I'm Maya Zimmerman, or Fantastic Fox. Um, I'm gonna be doing a little guide to map editing in Picotron, as requested by Arrow Onion Belly. Um, my approach is just what I've learned from the Picotron user manual. Um, it is not necessarily the right way to do it, but it's what I've figured out to do. So I'm going to reference the game that I'm working on because all the stuff is there already for me to show you it working in a game um, without having to code all the physics and stuff and collision and all that. This is just how the map editor works and how you call it in the code. So if we go into the map editor up here, um, we can see here that we have five layers. That's what I'm using in my game. And layer one is for blocks. Layers two through four are for backgrounds. And layer five is for uh, sprites or objects, things that are not just static blocks that are drawn in exactly the same place um, no matter what. So uh, let's so so as you can see, these blocks look really clean. And then we've got these watermelons and the player, and they look itty-bitty. And that's because everything on the map fits into 16 by 16. And I can show you, actually, um, because this will count as... See, you can switch between 0.gfx and 1.gfx, and this is 0.map, which you can load into different maps, which I'll show you. Um, so if I draw this cat, you can see it's all shrunk down um, to fit into 16 by 16. And then if I start it up, it is shrunk down on here because the block layer is, uh, is specifically drawing all the blocks, because they're static, they're not moving, um, that map layer is, uh, is static, and, uh, always gets drawn. Anything you put in layer one, because of the way I programmed it, gets drawn. Um, so we're gonna... And, and just to explain the buttons here, um... So there's draw, which draws whatever sprite you have um, on whatever layer you want. Um, you can, oh, let's go back to 0.gfx. Um, so yeah, so you can just, you know, draw with the, with the pencil. Um, you can do a square. Uh, you can do a fill. Um, here, let's let's move down here. And I'll fill in something. Uh, you can do a fill, and that fills in. You know, it fills how you how you'd expect. Uh, stamp, which I think I think this is a stamp. I'm not sure how this works actually. Um, and then this is to select, and if you select something, you can control C and control V, and you can delete it, and, um, actually, just, and this selects one, one thing at a time, you just click on it, and it selects it. If you want to handle like one specific thing, especially for objects. So th I think that covers everything in the editor. And now if we look at the code, um, a lot of this is in map 
in it. And that's right here. So this code, there's a lot of it, um, but a lot of it's doing the same thing and it's not super complicated. So uh, you want to make sets, like a background set, that's a table of your background tiles. And you can get much more in depth with this, but basically you want something to reference that says, these are this type, uh, you know, these are this type. Um, uh, this, I use background speed to decide how fast the background scrolls in parallax. Um, this is initializing the map. So see, I've got it here at zero dot map, but you can set it to anything you want in any folder you want, however you want. You can do map in it with, uh, you know, uh, a value in here, and then it, and then it, uh, will, you know, I can, I can, mappy. So now we've got our map in it, referencing whatever map we want, as long as now I've, I've got it set up so that, you, you know, you put it in the map folder, and then with a, with a name, dot map. We assign, we fetch, our map, um, and then we set it as a table number for the layer number, dot BMP for bitmap, um, and that's how that data is stored. So this gives us um, my map is not local and it's an in it. We want this to be global global because we want to draw it. That's why this one is layer one. Remember we said layer one is gonna get drawn every frame. Um, that's my map. And so because it's global, we can constantly draw it. Um, these, the backgrounds are local because they are they are objects, they move with the camera, depending on how much the camera moves, the background moves a certain amount as well, so that they seem to move less than the camera is moving. Um, so that's why those are local versus this being global. This is getting the map width and the map height. This is used for various calculations about the camera bounds and the player bounds and stuff like that. So this is just, you know, the width and the height of my map. Um, and then this is a function to take an object or, you know, uh, in this case, this uh, image, uh, essentially, of this layer, my object, and assign it to this memory location, map it to that memory location, um, and this memory location is where the working map is stored. That's what uh, that's what gets referenced when you're like, hey, what's what's that map? You know, what's mget? Because um, we'll use and get for finding out what's in the, the what's in a in a map location and oh and map load map load my map zero zero uh, map width map height so uh, this function takes the blocks that are near objects and the player and I'll let me. Let me just get to that one. Um, okay, yeah, here we go. Map load. So map load takes place during map in it, but it also takes place every frame. Like every object and player does a map load before it ch 
checks um, it checks you know what's to the side of it and what's below it and whether it needs to do all that and stuff like that um, so uh, we've got our map name getting set to the working map uh, blocks spike and death dirt are all different kinds of blocks for i equals x1 comma x2 so map load from map name which the the map that we're going to reference is wherever the block map is uh, we've got x1 x2 this is this is a square basically this says when map load is called you give it an x1 x2 xy x2 and it says this square for this square load the blocks that would exist there so um every every frame it initializes blocks spike and death dirt um so starting at x1 and ending at x2 starting at yy and and starting at y2, we've got these nested for loops. Um, checking, local checking equals mget i comma a. So i is the x value, a is the y value um, in terms of map tiles, not in terms of pixels. So you'll have to do conversions if you're like, uh, referencing the map width and the map height if you're referencing you know uh like in this case i and a we have to do i times 16 and a times 16 local new block equals x equals i times 16 a equals x times a times 16 uh sprid equals checking okay so uh what happens here is check when you m get this x and y position on the map what you get in checking is uh the sprite number so we put that here as sprid so it's got um hbx equals zero hby equals zero hbw equals 16 and hbh equals 16. So this is for hitbox x, hitbox y, hitbox width, and hitbox height. And that tells you everything about the hitbox for that block. Um, you know, it tells you where it's at in relation to the sprite and its size. It's really easy for these blocks. It's 0, 0, 16, 16, because it's uh, these 16 by 16 blocks, and the hitbox is the block itself. Um, blocks, stuff that is drawn with the map function, uh, it has to be 16 by 16. So, um, you know, if you want to use that function and not um, not have all these objects because uh, they have they have to be objects if they're not 16 by 16 uh, you can't really draw them prop properly otherwise um, and these are objects uh, you, you know we've got uh, add blocks new blocks so so our blocks table has new block this one added to it um, so at the end of this we have this table of blocks and spikes and yeah we're, we're checking here if you know checking equals block set uh, and for our whole block set these are all blocks um, so for B equals block set uh, for all of block set, if checking equals block set, um, sprite, ID, sprite ID equals checking. That's how 
map load works, and if we look in the in the game itself. Right, so here we go. Map load, my map, x minus, uh, mm -hmm. x adjust minus 2, y adjust minus 2, x adjust plus 3, x adjust plus 3. Um, so our x adjust equals floor player dot x divided by 16. So this gives us what it would be in map tiles. And that way when we use map load, we're using the right values as they relate to a map versus how they would relate to uh, the pixels in the game. Uh, so let's see, we've got map load, we've got map in it. Oh, drawing the map. You know, because if you've got these objects and they've got X and Y positions, you can draw them easily the way with SPR, uh, SPR, the sprite ID, SPR ID. Um, at the X and Y, really easy to do, and you know you can animate it or do any of that stuff. But to draw the map itself, yeah, here we go. So remember, we declared the global variable map, uh, my map. Well, here this is drawing it. It's as simple as this: map, my map, and it draws it. Um, and this, where it draws it, is determined it like is determined by the camera, which the camera is as simple as camera, camera X, camera Y. If you move camera to a different position, the camera will move and you know the the map will Everything will move according to the camera. You don't have to worry about changing any uh, values or anything. Just have your game run, use the camera to get um, get to get it to draw properly. And that's that's it. Um, that's really really it. Um, you know. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments. If something I said was backwards, feel free to leave comments. Uh, I'm very much uh, still a novice at game dev, but I thought I would share how to do this thing that I have some understanding of. Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Bye.